So from the top, hello everyone, we're the Cracker Canoe team. Uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, Cracker Canoe is part of ASCE, and the pictures we have some funny Toy Story and Bob the Builder. Cracker Canoes, Cracker Canoes everywhere, and then Cracker Canoe exists and then Bob the Builder. So today the presenters are the Cracker Canoe captains, myself. I'm a third year civil engineering student. I've been part of Canoe since my sophomore year. And Louisa, if you want to do a quick introduction. Yeah, hi. Um, I am a also a third year civil engineering, and I joined the Congress Canoe team in my freshman year. Yeah. Okay. So a quick introduction to ASCE. What ASCE is the American Society of Civil Engineers. It has about 150,000 members across the profession in over 177 countries. Uh, it was founded in 1852, and this makes it the oldest national engineering society. And not only is it a professional society, it has student chapters, such as IITs, and our mission statement is to promote civil engineering on the university level as a global profession that aims to build a better world by design. And what we do is usually have general body meetings where we have professionals from the leading com uh, companies come to present about their projects, about opportunities there, and just stuff like that in general. And on the bottom right is a picture of one of our meetings last year before COVID. So what is Cracker Canoe? Well, Cracker Canoe is a competition that's held every year by the ASE organization, where schools across the country make a canoe and compete in it. The first official ASC competition was in 1988. However, in the 70s, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and the University of California Berkeley claimed to have held the first regional competition where they raced each other to prove which goal was better. And it started off with UIUC's professor for the concrete class uh, tasking their students to develop a buoyant concrete canoe. And I believe it weighed about 360 pounds. And in the bottom in the middle picture, uh, you could see the actual first concrete canoe. It's referred to as the American's Cup of Civil Engineering. And the way it works is they release the roles around September. You compete in the region level in April. If you place and you go to nationals and you compete in June. And just the bottom left, it's a quick logo. And then the right is a picture where it actually came up in Jeopardy and humor. So the most important part of canoe is actual mix design. If you learn anything today, it's cement is not concrete. Cement is like the flower to the concrete spread. It helps make it. Uh, it takes hundreds of hours of iterative design. We make dozens of different mixtures based on criteria such as strength, lightness. You test each mix with different machines and different tests such as compression, like the one all in the right bottom, or testing a cylinder. And then after you test each one, you choose the final mix design. And with it, you choose the colors, which is on the top right, you can see the different colors available that we had for the previous year. So while you're doing all that in the mix design, you're also concerned about the hull design because it's important to determine whether the ship will float or sink. First, you research the different types of hulls and you design the best one that's best fit for your team. You design that with CAD, and in the top right, you can see our CAD file, where we actually have all the dimensions, the logos on there, and all the technical stuff. After you do so, you order a mold for it, male or female. What the male is, you apply the mold, the concrete on top of it, while the female is, you apply the concrete inside the mold. So on the top, the bottom left is our female mold, most recently, where it's already assembled, and that's how we apply the concrete. When you do that, you place some wooden gauges or wooden ribs to determine how thick it's gonna be while you're actually placing it to ensure it's not too thick or too thin in certain areas. So after you place the concrete, you do the aesthetics. Uh, but before you have to do the aesthetics design. So when you're choosing the theme, you have to choose what designs you like to use on it. For our previous year, it was Ragnar or Ragnarok, which is closely related to Vikings, so it was shields and dragons. You would have designed it first probably on paper, then put it to CAD, which is, and then we printed it out, made some molds, and then you you use that to place a concrete in it. 
it's quite challenging because in the previous year, it was such a vertical canoe to, in some extent where it was kind of hard to place the concrete, which is why you can see in the top right, I was trying to learn struggle, trying to make the dragon. So casting day, uh, we usually do, we did it on a Saturday from like nine to one, and then we got some pizza afterwards. On the left picture, we can see our mix captain holding the mix machine. I want to say this was like a year ago. And then in the video is us actually making the canoe. So right here, we're just preparing for it, trying to work out anything that doesn't seem to be good. Replacing the shields and the molds, testing the carbon fiber thing that we had to put in between. We broke out into several teams. We had two concrete placing teams, apples and biscuits. Apples placed the first layer of the concrete. Then we had the biscuits who placed the, can't think of the name right now, but placed the metallic sheet in between the carbon fiber reinforcements and then placed the second layer. In the back is the other team where they're making the actual concrete mix for us. So in those blue big uh, bins, we have all the different materials and in the table, you actually mix it together and then you hand it to our, our mixer who prepares in buckets. And then we have our bucket holders who help us. Uh, in the orange hat is our previous captain and he was our quality control manager at the time. What he did was just make sure everything was running smoothly. So he would help the mix team when it was necessary, come back and help us place the concrete when we had some problems, uh, placing it vertically or over the molds, and then just come back behind us and make sure we weren't missing spots, flatten it out. And on, in the black, he probably left by now, is one of our concrete professors. He came by to visit for a couple hours, you can see. And in the middle, we actually apply a support to help it not crack in the, uh, in the middle when we actually sit in it to race. So about rearing the end of the canoe. And then if you all saw our previous captain was holding some pink thing, and that's a buoyant we use to help it not sink. So even though it's light enough to flow, you just want to make sure it doesn't sink sink uh, and it's allowed. And yeah, that's what's finishing and just cleaning the shop. Some quick pictures. From casting day. Uh, the way it works is the day before you cast a quarter section, which is a quarter of the canoe. It serves as not only practice for our casters, but we're supposed to use it for our display to show the different layers of canoe. And on the bottom left, it's actually a good picture of the different layers. We have all in the left, no con no concrete, then the first layer of concrete, then concrete with the reinforcement, and then us placing the second layer of concrete. Uh, it has to be efficient to avoid cold joints. And what cold joints is, is when you're applying the concrete, you don't want to be too much distance in time between them, or else they're not going to bind together and you'll end up cracking when it dries. You need two layers of concrete one, with one sheet of reinforcement which told us about half an inch thick. And it took us about five to six hours to cast a 19 foot canoe. On the top left is our captain doing the mix. On the top right is the two teams, apples and biscuits, uh, working away and trying to finish it about halfway through at that point. Bottom left I talked about, and then the right is we're just finishing uh, at the end of the canoe. Since it's so narrow, putting in the buoyant and applying the final layer of concrete and making sure it's even. Once the canoe is done, we leave it in the mold for around a week. And then after that, we remove the canoe from the mold and we place it in a water tank. So one thing about concrete is that you need a lot of water to make it, but the water doesn't go into the mixing process. It goes when curing the concrete. So when it's drying, concrete absorbs a lot of water. And if there's not a lot of water around it, then it starts cracking. So we created this tent around our canoe. Then we put it underwater and we also made sure to leave the tent like humid, like control the humidity on the tent so that the concrete could absorb as much water as possible. 
Then after we put it underwater, we let it cure for 20 days, which is the curing time of concrete. And after that, we took it out of the water, let it dry, and we sand it to smooth it out and then apply a sealer so that it would look like shinier. Then after that is done, we put the canoe into a U-Haul truck with all like, with like a bunch of mattresses and foam. And we take it to the competition. The competition has a lot of parts to it. There's the, the oral presentation that we have to like explain why we choose this canoe, this concrete, like everything. Then there's the display, which has to be in theme with our canoe. On the bottom left, you can see one of our displays from two years ago that was Solaris. Uh, we have to display like concrete molds, like how, like all the mixtures that we use, everything and still be on theme. Then there's the team presentation and the race, if the weather permits. Uh, unfortunately, two years ago in 2018 with Solaris, the weather did not permit us to race. Like the firefighters was like, no, you guys are not racing. Uh, but we were able to do the sink test and you just bring the canoe into the water. You have to fill it with water until like it sinks and then you have to let it go and the canoe has to like be stable. If you can move to the next one. Those are just some pictures of us like racing, the canoe falling apart. Yeah, as I mentioned, the sinker float. We do know our canoe from last year did uh, float because before like we submerged into water, it was like floating in the tank and then we had to like use buckets to like make it sink. And it's actually like if you fill the canoe with water and it like sinks, that's a good thing. That's like one of the tests that we have to do in the competition before we race with it. Um, but yeah, hopefully next year We can do another one. Yeah, this is the final look from last year's canoe with the Vikings theme. On the left, you can see photos of the entire canoe with all the shields. And then on the right, it was our canoe already cut in half because of like storaging. We unfortunately cannot keep all the canoes. So we usually like cut them in half and like hang them somewhere on campus. But yeah, as you can see, it's pretty big, but it's actually not that heavy because the thinner we make it, the lighter it is. And every year we try to make it as thin and as light as possible, but like not that, so that it breaks. Yeah, if I recall, this one was like about 150 pounds. Yeah, so it's compared to light. the 360 that was originally, it's pretty light. <laughs> but yeah, and then this is just our recent history. Three years ago, there was the, like in 2017, I think there was the Atlantis, which is the one on your top right and we got fourth place in the competition and the wild card which basically means that we can go to the nationals competition and that was in california then solaris which was the 2018 canoe was a sleeker design it was lighter and thinner than the atlantis and we got third in overall design but we couldn't race in it so like we didn't get like racing points and everything then ragnar which was last year's Unfortunately, because of COVID, we didn't do anything with it, but it's really pretty and it, we do know that it floats and hopefully next year we'll be able to do another one and we'll actually be able to race in it. Yeah, thank you so much for listening to us. Do you guys have any questions? Feel free to either turn on your mic or write in the chat. How do you get the canoe out of the mold? Theoretically, okay. before we put the picture. concrete, yeah, before we put the concrete on the mold, we put this like silicon, like you see that the mold inside is kind of yellow. Okay. You see yeah. how it's like yellow? It's because we put this like, it's like a silicon, like. I thought it was oil. Yeah, no, there is oil, but there's also like this silicon paste and then we put oil vegetable oil right mm -hmm. i think it was and that's yeah. why we order the mold in pieces yeah and the mold is not like a full thing it's like pieces of it so like yeah, we the... put all the pieces together kind of like so they didn't move then we put this like silicone paste then we like put a bunch of oil 
and then we put the concrete so that hopefully when the concrete's like one week already dry, it's just gonna like slide out. Like if we take one part of the mold out, it should just slide off because of the oil and yeah, that sometimes doesn't happen. It gets stuck sometimes and I have to like be as delicate as possible. But basically like four big pieces that we can just like take them out. Yeah, we got in we got in pieces assembled it with some wooden sticks to serve like nails to connect the mold. And then yeah, she said we took it apart. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs>